In this session, I'd like to speak a little bit about forgiveness. One of the things we notice in the Gospels is that Jesus not only consoles us with his loving presence, but he also challenges us. In fact, when St. Peter went up to Jesus and asked them, should we forgive seven times? Jesus' response was, we sure could forgive 70 times seven. Now, seven times, seven is the perfect number, so it's already an infinite number of times that we should forgive. And Jesus' response, there is no counting. We have to always be willing to forgive. But how can we forgive somebody who has hurt us badly? How do we forgive things for the people who have passed away have done to us in the past? How do we let go of these things? I think there are a couple of common sense rules that we should follow. First of all, we should realize that the reason we forgive is not because the other person deserves it, but rather the other person needs it. The, that which the person has done to us is a symptom of that person's brokenness. Now, we don't know why the brokenness is there. It might have been part of that person's choice. It might have been something done to that person, but the person is broken. And the hurt that they've inflicted upon us is a symptom of that brokenness. And we don't want to make the hurt worse. And therefore, we choose to love them, even though it's difficult. And notice I use the word choose, because forgiveness is not a feeling that we experience and everything's fine. Forgiveness is a tough choice that we make, that we're not going to allow the other person's conduct to influence how I'm going to respond to that person. It's no longer an eye for an eye and a tooth for a tooth, but rather the idea that I will love this world into healing. And so I forgive the other person most of all because the person needs it. Second, I forgive the person not because I think a person is going to stop doing what he or she is doing. That person will probably continue. But I refuse to allow that conduct to influence my response. I choose to forgive that person. And I forgive the person because I want to create a better world. I realize that only love can change this world. I think of St. Maximilian Kolbe, who was in the concentration camp in Auschwitz. He was asked by a fellow prisoner, shouldn't we hate the Nazis? And his response is no, only love creates. Only love changes this world and makes it into God's kingdom. And so when we forgive others, it's a very godly thing. And when we forgive others, it also opens our hearts to accept the forgiveness that God is offering us. Because if, we, because if we refuse to forgive them, it's a sign that our hearts are closed, that we're not willing to forgive them. And it means that we can't accept God's forgiveness. Even though God's always offering it, our hearts are closed to it. We're in charge, we're in control. Forgiveness is an act of surrender, an act of healing both for the other person and for ourself. In fact, Nelson Mandela said, to hold on to a grudge is like taking poison and thinking it'll hurt the other person. The person we hurt most when we refuse to forgive is ourself. Now, what happens when I think I forgave and it comes back? That's where the forgiving 70 times seven comes in. Sometimes it's 70 times seven different things Sometimes it's 70 times seven, the same thing. We forgive and it comes back and we forgive and it comes back and so on and so on. Until one day that hurt no longer can control us and we let go of it. We can't judge when it's gonna happen. Sometimes it can take almost forever. In fact, if the person has passed away and we still hold that, that grudge inside of us, I often recommend people write it down on a note and then burn that note and spread the ashes on that person's grave just to do something symbolic to let go of it. Now, people often ask me too, should I forgive and forget? If you check scripture carefully, it never says that. We have to forgive, but sometimes we, we have to make sure that we don't forget. We have to trust people as much as they are trustworthy. And if they're not trustworthy, if they're going to hurt us, we shouldn't be foolish and allow them to take advantage of us. We should go into the relationship realizing that they'll probably violate the boundaries that we try to establish. 
but we know that going in. And therefore, one of the things that is really helpful is a saying that Bob Wicks used to say. He's a counselor in the Baltimore area. He always said, expect nothing, hope for something, be surprised. Don't expect them to change, but if they do change even a little bit, celebrate it. Because maybe that small change in their life costs them more than a great change in our lives. Maybe they receive very few gifts of grace and they're doing the best they can. And so when we forgive, we are doing something very godlike. We are healing the hurt of this world, something that Jesus came into the world to do and something that he told us to share, to engage as a ministry that we too might heal the hurt. And if you want more information about the freedom of forgiveness, I would recommend that you contact the Companions of St. Anthony and ask for Good News Note number 33, written by Father Jim Elliott. And may God bless us. Thank mm-hmm. you.